Hello everyone and welcome to my new video and what is this video about? Well this video is actually about how I made this video which is from a song that I released last week as part of an EP which you can go and buy right now from my Bandcamp and then I put the project file for this video on my Patreon which you can also go and get right now and uh, I just uh, lots of people seem to enjoy it and uh, people are having fun it's a bit of a crazy workout of 3D geometry and lighting and some post-processing and really I kind of let's find a nice freeze frame here that'll do <laughs> so really I kind of had hopes that this would be a proof of concept of sorts that not only can you make music in Ableton but with Max and Max for Live you can also make visuals to go with it um perform with them set them up so that they react to audio and then you know record the performance and automate it like you would with with any kind of other device really so I'm just going to sort of uh give you a little tour of that and then I'm going to get more into this in the new year because this has sort of been something that I've been using to keep myself occupied over the last couple of months is getting really really better at jitter and then trying to get it to run nicely in Ableton so I built this device let's have a little look at it do its thing oh my goodness me that's loud right so this is all running in Ableton via Max for Live make this a bit bigger now this is partly audio reactive and then partly controlled via MIDI so if you look down here you can sort of see I've captured in all this automation which I've then kind of neatened up in all the automation lanes so I started off by just jamming with it with a MIDI controller and then um, at certain points where I kind of really liked what it was doing I could go in and then be very very precise with the automation if I wanted to I try to make it as salmon and gray as possible the lighting has come out really good I think this is at 1080p 60 FPS I could have gone up to 4k but I decided to play it safe <laughs> and then it was captured out via siphon recorder and then I edited it uh, together with the track in Premiere. I probably could have, it's still going even though it's paused, I probably could have captured the audio and the video to OBS um, at a lossless file, Apple ProRes 444 or 422 or whatever. Anyway, let's have a look at it inside. Oh, there's this really nice motion glitch thing in there as well. Anyway, let's open it up, have a look. And I'll just sort of do a little kind of quick tour of it and then yeah once the holidays are over i'm going to get more into this and explore it a lot more so yeah we've got our jit.world here which is our final rendering destination and then we've got this node here where pretty much all of this stuff is rendering to so the core of the patch starts with this grid shape um which is uh drawing to this node and then it's making a plane i've set the dims to 20 by 20 and the yeah and then i've set the matrix output to one because i was going to use some processing with jit.catch into various jit.matrix stuff here um to essentially displace the geometry of this grid shape and then that goes into jit.gl.multiple which then goes into another grid shape which does the final sort of presentation of that geometry and then I've got some stuff here for how big it is or rather how much space it takes up. So size really is actually more kind of how much space it takes up. The scale is the scale of each individual cube. Um, what have we got here? The overall dimensions of both the matrix from the jit.catch. So the jit.catch um, actually analyzes the audio. We could probably have a little quick look at this. Um, it's very good for getting started with audio reactive you can see it's actually reacting and taking that audio that's coming in from Ableton and converting that to a matrix which then we can then use for all kinds of other stuff I think we can actually watch the automation yeah it's the automation's going in here as well so yes this dimensions here affects the dimensions of that matrix and then the matrix of the the overall grid shape 
Uh, there's a filter here to only let through certain um, cells of that matrix if they are above or below a certain number. This slide here will do some interpolation between frames of the various numbers in those cells in that matrix. And then this X fade here is crossfading between this part of the patch and then this just this is just some noise for when it kind of goes all <laughs> I thought I'll just crossfade over to some noise. Um, what else do we have? So that's basically the geometry, all this stuff here, the orangey thing you're looking at. Um, there's another grid shape somewhere. Yes, there's a grid shape down here, which is that kind of gray background so that I can have that shadow. There's some stuff here. So this is uh, this is a, the camera. Two little controls here for the camera. This is just the thing to shake it, make it go all shaky cam. And then this thing is a little uh, thing that I made to just change the camera position when I push that button. So you'll see that when that button gets pushed, the camera position changes. And that's actually using JIT.noise, um, which is then being unpacked into floating point numbers and then packed into the position of the camera. And then what else is there? So there's some post-processing, right? So this node here is essentially the rendering destination or the sub-rendering destination. And then all of these JIT.GL.passes here are processing whatever's on that node. And I'm using a handful of things here. This is the motion blur, um, which just adds a little bit of blur when the camera moves or when the geometry moves and changes position. This motion glitch thing, which is really, really good, which kind of makes everything glitch out. And then there's this bloom just to give me sort of a little bit of every time that there's a crash symbol or the start of a bar, I just dial in that bloom just to sort of emphasize that part of the song. Then that all goes into a video plane, which then goes to the final rendering destination. So I think what, what I might actually do come out of this I won't save it and then maybe we can sort of have a look at it working in real time all right so I've imported it back in to a new project which is just reacting to my microphone maybe we can sort of see what it's doing let's pull that where's the bloom ah okay so that's with no bloom okay so you can see just by right off the bat that uh, it is reacting to my voice and yeah, so there you go. Um, so this is the, the size dial here, which kind of just determines how far apart the cubes are. This is the scale of the cube. So this is very small and then this is very big. These are the dimensions of the cubes. So that's very high dimensions. This is very low. Uh, the slide will just sort of slide them a little bit so that you have a little bit more time to look at them. Um, but they're still fluttering to the audio. Uh, this is the filter. So if I turn the filter up, this is probably not going to work because I'm talking. Hello. It probably needs a little bit more audio, but that just basically lets through only a certain amount of data from the matrix that's analyzing the audio. And then this, this I really like. This is the rotate. So I can speed that up really fast and it rotates really, really fast. And then I can slow it down and do it the other direction. I actually mapped that to my pitch bend on my keyboard so that when I let go of the pitch bend, it will flick back to the center. This is the shaky cam, just makes it shake. Whoa. And then this is the crossfade. So currently this is crossfading to the geometry that's doing the audio analysis. And then, but I can crossfade to another, that's really intense. I can just crossfade to something that just flickers like that. Uh, the motion glitch kind of just makes it glitch out, gives it that sort of data mosh thing, which I like very much. That's all working based on position, I think. So um, I think that the 3D geometry has to be moving in 3D space in order for that to work. That's just the thing that comes with uh, Max. Then there's this button which changes the camera. You just push that button and then you get a different camera angle. And then the bloom, pull that all the way down and then you get loads of nice bloom. So... Yeah, um, and I could perform with that. I, I can't right now because I haven't got a MIDI controller plugged in, but I could perform with this. I can record all this automation. So I feel like that this is pretty exciting. Um, I'm quite proud of this, and I feel like that th this is really a great direction for us to go in, and I'm going to be concentrating a lot 
on this in the new year. I'm going to m- really want to either just make loads of individual devices for doing all kinds of things to do with 3D geometry or video processing, or perhaps um, building like a, an entire suite. There are, of course, um, lots of really, really great uh, applications out there already. Um, Zwobot is very good. I'm quite partial to Video Sync. Um, I did a show with Video Sync recently. It's really good. You can basically use the session view um, to play videos like you would audio clips. And there's Ebo Suite, which is really good. So these things um, obviously exist. But I want to I want to sort of um, get into building our own because that's what we do on this channel. We make we make stuff. So yeah, that was just a little sort of quick demonstration of this how this patch and how I made it. And um, yeah, if you want to get it and have a go with it and explore it, steal the ideas, then head over to my Patreon. It's there. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's really all I wanted to talk about, really. Ooh. Hang on, let's pull that crossfade down. Goodbye, everyone, and see you in the next video. If I don't see you before Christmas, have a very nice time. Okay. Bye.